with all that? Okay. Um, which uh, I'm looking forward to very much because um, I actually know very little about the emerging uh, graphic novel scene in India. Um, just a little bit, and uh, so I'm here to learn just as you are. But I do want to talk a little bit about my own background with comics and graphic novels and uh, storytelling. Um, can, we, can you put some of those visuals up, please? The, the ones that uh, I want to start out with? Uh, I teach at the University of Iowa, as, as Christoph said, and um, I teach courses on uh, epic uh, narrative, particularly uh, popular Hinduism. Um, and when I was uh, doing research in India in the 1980s, uh, 70s, 80s, and early 90s, my children were with me, my kids were growing up, and of course my children read Amar Chitra Katha. And my older daughter, uh, whose name is Mira, uh, learned about her name from the Amar Chitra Katha uh, comic book, you know, the famous Mirabai comic book. Next slide, please. Um, and both kids, of course, read the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, and we read to them as bedtime stories. So we had a kind of family uh, background with uh, uh, ACK. Um, then, next slide, please. Next image, yeah. Um, I regularly teach a history course at the University of Iowa, which um, focuses on the theme of visual culture. It's called From Seals to Cinema and Comics, Visual Culture as Window to a Great Civilization. And um, in this course, I have a week unit on the Ramayana, which is my own specialty, and I have the students read the, uh, the big Amar Chitra Katha 100-page uh, Ramayana as a, as a general introduction to that. And I like it because it does give them a certain visual sense of the story besides um, acquainting them with the basic narrative. Uh, next image. Um, I also regularly teach courses on the Mahabharata, and the last time I did so, um, I used one of uh, the Campfire, the new uh, graphic novels from Campfire Books, which Jason Quinn authored, The Core of an Empire, and I hope we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about that later. Um, and I used The Revenge of Abhimanyu, which was very good, but that, I, mean, that, I used it at the point at which the students already knew the whole overall Mahabharata story quite well. And so we were able to just focus, as you do, on that character and on that episode in, in actually book 10, I think it's, no, yeah, in book 10, Soptika, yeah. So, um, I think I have another slide, let me see, please. Yeah, um, also I just want to mention um, the, the, the only book I was aware of about Amar Chitra Katha, but I understand there is another one, but the, the only one I'm aware of is uh, India's Immortal Comic Books by uh, a scholar named Carlene McLean, and she was a student of mine. Uh, she, she studied Hindi with me at the University of Iowa, and I got her interested in the epics, and, and then she ended up doing her PhD dissertation on Amar Chitrakatha and doing a lot of research, yeah. But I understand there is another book uh, now, a scholarly book that looks at the series. So, okay, with that, I would like to go into uh, talking with our, our panelists, and I'm going to ask each of them to talk briefly uh, about what they do, and I will start with um, Rina. Uh, Rina Puri to my right. Um, so you can do the next slide, I believe. Next, next, not the last, the next. N no, you're going backwards. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rina Puri is the executive editor of Amar Chitra Katha. She has been writing and editing comics for the last 26 years. Uh, she was earlier associate editor of Tinkle Comics. She's published short stories in various magazines and books and has also broadcast her short stories over BBC Radio. She's written a set of children's encyclopedias on the environment for Terry. She also works in animal welfare <laughs> and hopes to start an old age home for dogs yes. someday. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Rina, would you, what would you like to tell us about uh, the, the venerable Amar Chitra Katha? Yeah. I, um, 
Thank you. The venerable is, um, well, that's what he earned, I think, over the last 50 years, because we celebrate in 2017, 50 years of Amar Chitra Katha. And uh, I've been with them for 26 years out of that, so with Tinkle and then with Amar Chitra Katha. It's been a long haul, but uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it, comics and uh, research and editing and the rest of it. But uh, to talk a little about Amar Chitra Katha, it was created uh, in 1967 by Mr. Anand Pai for the express reason of acquainting Indian children with, their, with Indian stories. Because he felt that children in India didn't know, didn't seem to know enough about their own mythology, history, biography. So that's how he thought of starting comics. And when he did, uh, he was met with a lot of opposition because uh, people said that you can't have gods in comics. Like, how do you, you know, depict gods in comics? You can't do that. Because comics was just not allowed those days, and they were supposed to be bad, full of slang, and, you know, not the right kind of humor. And here was a man who wanted to bring comics and gods together. But I think he did that by choosing um, the right kind of art uh, and the right kind of script writers. And um, uh, the first comic that he brought out was Krishna. And it took about five years for Amar Chitra Katha to really take off. But uh, after five years, uh, uh, it's, it's history, you know, like it, it's been a success story. So we've come a long way. We've come from the times when we used to do everything manually, be it the art, be it the coloring, be it lettering, the balloons, pasting the you know, little bits of paper on the, on, on the artwork and writing it out painstakingly. And today, everything is digitized. So I think that is the big journey that we've traveled over the years, from manual to digital. And um, yeah, I've seen most of it, and uh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, what, whatever. Um, how, many, uh, how many titles? Can, can you uh, move on in the slides there? There's a few more Amar Chitra. There's another Amar Chitra Katha slide, if you would go, go back to the slides, please. We do want to keep those visuals. There are some, yeah, there yeah. Are covers. Yes, this is, yeah, if you can go back to that one, yeah. As a slide, please, yeah. please. Yeah, that's, that's it. They should look good. Um, I, yeah, I wanted to ask you about, uh, has the artwork changed in recent years um, in terms of the kind of a different look? Are you, are, are you is it developing? Uh, yeah, we've had to make a few changes because uh, the way artists are drawing today is different. It's not like a Ram Vyarkar or a Pratap Malik, those are the, the old artists, much revered artists, who used to do by hand. And uh, the, the uh, clue given to them was, you know, the tip given to them was, copy the art, the painters. So Ravi Verma, artists like that, were the inspiration for Amar Chitra Katha art, even calendar art to a large extent. But today, everything is uh, digitized, and it's a more global, uh, way of looking at a character. If you see the old Amar Chitra Kathas, you'll find that Rama and Krishna are very slim because, you know, they were supposed to have masculine and feminine bodies. The gods were, you know, made like that. But today, uh, the younger generation, they don't want gods who are slim. They want, uh, you know, muscular ones. So we have Shiva with six-pack abs and the rest of it. So, <laughs> so we have had to change the art, but we also have to walk a very tight rope there. Because the older readers, the, I mean, we span from the 70s down to now, so the older readers prefer the older art. So they feel that, you know, we are betraying uh, Amar Chitra Katha if we make it in a more modern way. So then we're always trying to balance that and keep them happy and keep the new kids happy. And I hope we are making some kind of a, uh, you know, a balance over there. Thank you. Um, I will turn to Pankaj, Pankaj uh, Thapa, also known as Prem Singh Thapa, is Associate Professor and Head, Department of English, Sikkim Government College, where he has been teaching for the past 34 years. Whoa, that's two more than me. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, he um, has written The Boy Who Had a Dream, a nomadic folktale from Tibet, uh, published by the Finhorn Press in Scotland. Um, he's done the uh, illustrations for um, uh, Yish Yishidoma's Legends of the Lepchas, 
another book uh, called Stories Around the Hearth. Um, Udipana uh, Goswami's Where We Come From, Where We Are Going, and Guru T. Ladakhi's Monk on the Hill. He uh, periodically, although not at the moment, does uh, a cartoon uh, for the Sikkim Express newspaper called Quick Quip Daily. And if you would go to the next slide in my series, I believe we have one of those there just to show. Uh, and I would invite you to speak about your, your use of... No? Okay, you're going to have to skip, you're going to have to skip a couple. Go, go further down. I think we can, uh, we can go to my folder. That's this it, is Janvi's. This is Janvi's uh, folder. Those are Janvi's. Just keep going. These were not uh, put in the order in which we are appearing. Philip, she's got a separate folder so that it doesn't confuse hers with mine, no? Okay. So I think... Uh, no, you speak, speak yeah. about your, your work, please. Okay, thank you, Philip. And uh, such a pleasure to be here. Heard so much about JLF. And, uh, and of course, a dream come true to meet uh, Rina. We've all grown up on Amar Chitra Katha and we were just kind of having a good chat about uh, you know, panels from Shakuntala and if it wasn't for Amar Chitra Katha, uh, Ramayan, Mahabharat, Krishna, yes, this stuff we would know, but then, uh, uh, you know, stuff like, I was telling her, Nala, Damayanti, this stuff we would have not known about if it wasn't for Amar Chitra Katha, so thank you. And of course, fantastic meeting somebody who's actually worked with Spider-Man and Benton, <laughs> yeah, stuff we grew up on. Of course, Spider-Man's changed a lot since our days. You know, yeah, he's become darker. Yeah. Okay, so, and uh, yeah, so besides teaching, which I've been trying to do for the last 34 years, and thank you, Philip, for letting the cat out of the bag, two more years than you, or less than you. I do these cartoons, and uh, I picked a few at random for you guys to have a look, and I know this is the post-lunch session, so it's quite somnolent, and uh, I was thinking maybe if you just go through the cartoons and then uh, then you get to know a better idea of what, uh, you know, which area I'm coming from. This is what I used to do in Sikkim Express. Uh, one of the cartoons I'd like to start off with is, uh, but before we do that, would it be possible to turn off a couple of those uh, halogen lamps up there? It's uh, very blinding, you know, you can keep two on. Maybe I, because I don't think you can really see the screen from where you're sitting. Sorry? Filming. Oh, okay. Oh, so you need for the filming. Okay, that's better. Fine, fine, okay, that's good enough. So I think what we'll just do is, uh, instead of uh, going on talking about it, let's just uh, run through the cartoons. Okay. So this is one of the first ones which I had done, which uh, actually went viral, you know. I think many of you would have uh, seen this at some point. If we could, uh, thank you. Okay, and if we make it full screen, I'm sure we get some more claps. Uh, Nidhi, can we make that full screen, please? Okay. That's a different cartoon up there. <laughs> More cartoons. No? no, now it's two. So, okay. So anyway, uh, you, the one I just did, the, the one on the iPad one, it's called the iTunes now because, and uh, that's the interesting thing about the net. I think we had a long chat about copyright uh, this morning uh, at some point. Now when this cartoon went viral, uh, I saw that somebody had wiped off uh, my signature and you know the Pankaj stamp on the top which I don't think really was uh, you know with a malicious intent or something. It's just that you want to share a funny joke but you don't want to get caught up into all the legalities of you know, you know maybe copyright and all that. So the easiest thing is just wipe it off. But then in that way this went viral and like uh, Raman will uh, vouch this is the one cartoon which made me world famous in gang talk like they say. You know? <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you could just go back to the cartoons from the first one, iPad. Oh, 
Okay. Technical hitch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. Go back. Uh, right. You got that. Can you pause? Okay. This is like a slideshow and fast forward. Okay. So this one. Uh, oh boy. Can you? Yeah. So it's okay. You're out of control. <laughs> totally. No. <laughs> just, just give them the pen drive. And I said we seem to be out of yeah, time. So, uh, <laughs> so, no. So maybe I, I can. We can come back to my cartoons. Yeah. So we could. <laughs> they're, they're uh, wonderful cartoons, but I, yeah, I, so I don't want to cut the other uh, presenters short. So let me turn to um, Janavi, Janavi Prasad. Uh, is a graduate of St. Stephen's College, uh, Delhi University, and pursued her higher studies from the Cardiff School of Journalism in the UK. Uh, after 16 years in the field of media, she started an NGO called Youth for Gandhi Foundation in 2009 and worked for the next three years to research and bring back Gandhi in the daily lives of people. Uh, through this foundation, she ran a first-of-its-kind online multimedia campaign on rediscovering Gandhi across 3,000 schools in Delhi, uh, in the national capital region, and has the repertoire of collating one of the most extensive artwork archives on Gandhi in all formats, print, audio, digital. Her wide-ranging experience led her to launch her NGO that uses media and technology tools to promote awareness about Gandhi and, and and other issues such as health, education, environment, and social justice. Um, more recently, she conceived and created the only existing digital portal on Gandhi for children. Um, she also uh, brought the Kumaon Literary Festival to life um, in the first year of its inception, and now she has moved on to direct the Abbotsford Literary Weekend in Nenital. Uh, she's the founder of the Nenital Book Club. Okay, uh, Janavi, can we, can we in my PowerPoint, in the original PowerPoint, can we move to those Gandhi images? Those are from Janavi's uh, graphic novel, which I would ask you to say a few words about. Thanks, Philip. Uh, too much information about me, it was my bio data that I sent him, it should have been a bit more brief. Um, well, this is my debut at the JLF as an author. Uh, by profession, I am a documentary filmmaker. Uh, and about 10 years ago, I sort of stumbled on uh, a book called My Experiments with Truth, uh, which is Gandhi's autobiography. And um, I sort of had to force myself to sort of uh, read through it. But when I did, I couldn't stop. It is, I have to admit, the, the book is a translation from Gujarati, so it's a very tedious piece of writing, um, one won't really sort of want to go ahead with it. Uh, but the incidents that he narrates uh, about himself as he goes along, uh, from days in Porbandar till he joins mainstream politics, those incidents, what he calls, are experiments of his life. From smoking on the shy, from stealing, from going to brothel houses, from, you know, wooing women in London. I mean, his, his, his autobiography had everything what you call is a masala for the reader. But sadly, um, Gandhi is sort of uh, uh, gone into the past. And when I read the autobiography, I realized that this story needs to come out in a much more simplified version, much more fun, much more entertaining. And it should come out for the young adults. Um, because here we imagine Gandhi to be a Mahatma, which yes, he was. Gandhi never called himself a Mahatma. Uh, it is us who have put him on that pedestal. After reading the book, I realized he was a very ordinary man with ordinary whims and fancies. I am petrified of public speaking. So was Gandhi. And that sort of comforts me, you see. If this man who is so larger than life was so ordinary at the same time, then all of us can be him. 
and that is why I chose the medium of a graphic novel, which is easy for youngsters to sort of uh, adapt to. We all are on our mobile phones, it's become a part of our anatomy. Um, we have no time to even sit by ourselves and read a novel. We need, a, we need to schedule that reading. Uh, so in this fast-paced generation, I think this, this format really works in terms of getting your knowledge about leaders or countries or whatever you like in a fun and entertaining and easy way. And it remains with you in terms of a photographic memory, whatever might impact you. So um, let's hope um, I, you guys like this. You, looking at the couple of frames that we have here, can I ask you, for, first of all, who the illustrator is? Yes. Yeah. I have to mention the illustrator. It went through a lot of ups and downs. Uh, the, it took me about six years to finish this book. Uh, the storyboarding was done by a gentleman from NID called Girish Arora. Uh, he was my college mate in St. Stephen's and he used to be a backbencher, scribbling all the time. And I met him after 10 years and I knew who he would be the right person to do the book. But then he had other commitments. So the guy who actually finished it is a gentleman called Uttam Sena. And I think he's done a fairly good job. Uh, did you see the other slide as well? I've just put two, three slides for all of you because I didn't want to share everything. If I share it now, you guys will not go and buy the book. <laughs> so they're please very, do. They're very striking and interesting. This is an looking. image of the young Gandhi where he's uh, picking up cigarette stubs from wherever he could and experimenting with it. So uh, there are lots more of these things which we don't know about Gandhi in the book and I hope um, you guys read it and like it. Thank you. He, he experiments with many things. Tobacco, meat, <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you so much. All right, um, I'm gonna turn to Arpita. Arpita Das runs the award-winning independent publishing house Yoda Press and leads the Word Lab at the Indian Institute of Human Settlements. I think if you go down a few more images, you'll come to some from Arpita. Uh, after this, keep going. In the same, in the original presentation there. No, then we get that. One more. One more. No, no. Other way. There. This, this is from your, yeah. So, um, she, as I say, she uh, curates the Book Award for Excellence in Writing on Cinema and Word to Screen Market for the Mumbai Film Festival every year. She's also the curator of the Urban Writings uh, Festival, City Scripts. Arpita, cut? Oh, uh, let me just say, Yoda Press, which she uh, uh, runs, published the first graphic book on partition in 2013 called This Side, That Side, which I think these it's images there. come from, yeah. It was curated by renowned graphic artist and storyteller Vishwajyoti Ghosh and brought together more than 40 writers and artists from India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. Um, so maybe we should talk about that project, please. So um, even before uh, this side, that side, I wanted to mention that I think, of course, we all grew up with Amar Chitra Katha and with uh, comics being uh, the sort of thing that parents always told you not to read, particularly before exams. And I find now I tell my, my, my children to read comics. So it's sort of come full circle in a sense, isn't it? Uh, how comics, the perception of comics has changed with the perception of parenting almost. Um, but uh, Yoda Press, which is a, an independent publishing house, our first tryst with the uh, graphic novels or comics was actually in the form of a scholarly book on Amar Chitra Katha, the one you're referring to, which was published by Nandini Chandra, uh, uh, written by Nandini Chandra and published by us in 2008, called the classical uh, popular, uh, classic popular, and which took. Uh, um, uh, an analytical view of uh, of Amar Chitra Katha and uh, the writers and the illustrators behind the work. Um, after that, we published a very curious book called A Little Book on Men, which I'm never ever able, I cannot ever allow it to go out of print. It's a graphic book on Indian men. Um, of course, it's, it's written by the filmmaker Rahul Roy, activist filmmaker Rahul Roy, and beautifully designed and illustrated by Sharna Dastur. I don't have slides from that here, but it's a very, very tongue-in-cheek uh, look at the whole project of masculinity 
uh, in India, North India. Um, so we get, so it's really weird at the book fair, this young woman picked it up saying, I want my fiance to read it. And I said, yeah, you know, go for it. But then there'll also be NGOs which will order 500 copies because they're doing a sen gender sensitization program. So sort of, it's called a little book on men. And there's somebody who came to this book fair and said, how can a book on men be little? I said, it, it, they should be now, perhaps. <laughs> so anyway, um, but um, these were more experimental sort of trysts with comics or graphic novels, as I said. Um, in 2011, I, I, I actually uh, approached Goethe Institute um, and um, asked them if they would help me bring out what I thought of as um, a curated anthology of uh, graphic narratives on partition um, by the by, you know, second or maybe even second and a half generation uh, people after partition. And it turned into we commissioned Vishwa Vishwajyoti Ghosh to curate it as, you know, there were about or finally about 42 artists and storytellers um, who contributed in it. It became this mammoth project and it was also really successful in terms of the feedback. Um, uh, and not just the feedback, I mean, I think that is the one book that really put Yoda Press on the map, as it were. I mean, people, I mean, we're still a small independent press, but I don't think, I mean, after that, people would say, oh, yeah, I've seen TSTS TS by, uh, you know, this, that Bollywoodization of our titles, you know, this side, that side became TSTS TS, uh, by Yoda Press. So it was, it was a really important book for us. There are some slides in there and the cover, uh, but you can come to it whenever. There's no order. You can just, you know, uh, you can just show them as and when. I mean, there's no order. Um, having done this graphic anthology, um, obviously, I felt more emboldened. It's the next, the next slide, actually. Yeah. So um, that's actually from Vishwa's own uh, story in there about um, uh, his grandmother, who used to work with Bangladeshi refugees, because this looked at not just the Indian partition, uh, but also 71 and the further partition. Um, and uh, and it's a very evocative, very evocative story about the women in the Bangladeshi refugee colony and how uh, in Delhi. Um, so after this, we got emboldened to do more graphic anthologies, and we decided to launch a series which we did last year called First Hand. Um, I've done this with the very well-known graphic uh, artist Orijit Sen and Vidyun Sabhani, who runs Captain Bijli Comics. And the idea is that we come out with volumes, uh, say, every other year, which um, of, of comic narratives, but on the, on the contemporary reality, uh, you know, on the ground. So there'll be their comics. If you go back a slide, the comics on the, uh, violence against women, there's comics on um, uh, memoirs, like this one had a memoir of Begum Akhtar called Akhtari. Um, this girl not from Madras was actually about trafficking um, and so on. Wow. So, well, we, we can look forward to more, in other words, from, from Yoda Press. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, okay I'm gonna turn to our uh, next participant, Jason Quinn. Um, and for this, you want to go to that separate, yeah, oh, the, the campfire Ooh. one. Jason Quinn is currently the editor of the popular BBC magazine, Doctor Who Adventures. He has worked in comic books for the last 25 years, and in that time has written for Spider-Man, Ben 10, and many more. He has also worked in television as scriptwriter for the children, children's TV series, Dream Street. He lived in Delhi for two years, working as creative content head for Campfire Graphic Novels. He's the author of the Cordova Empire series for them, as well as the award-winning Steve Jobs, Genius by Design. He too wrote a version of Gandhi's life called Gandhi, My Life is My Message. Uh, he did a graphic novel, World War II, Against the Rising Sun. Uh, one on the Beatles, All Our Yesterdays and a novel called The Beautiful Game. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, it's great to be here. And yeah, I'd like to 
talk a little bit about graphic novels and comic books and the work that Campfire does with especially mythology and the ancient tales. Um, before I started working for Campfire a few years ago, I um, picked up at one of the book fairs, I saw Campfire's stall and picked up some of them. I think it was the one on Sita and was looking through it and I thought, oh, this is actually a really great story. Now, me as a Western, I, I didn't even know who she was at that, at that point. Uh, yeah, but I thought, this is a fantastic, okay. Nice looking cover, nice looking girl on the, on the cover. All right, let's have a look. And I got really into the story. My kids got into the story. And I thought, I want to see more. And eventually I approached Campfire and said, look, really love your work. And I'd like to actually work for you, do something for you. And we did a lot of the traditional um, storytelling, a lot of the traditional ancient stories. So here we see from Sundakand and uh, various different art styles that we would use in, the, in those books. And here we see from Krishna as well. So it's telling the stories, um, bringing them alive for a new audience. Now I'm sure most of your kids of course, would know the stories, be familiar with them. But part of the great joy of these stories is actually retelling them. You know, it's sitting down and telling them. And with visuals, it makes them so much more memorable. I, I'm speaking as someone who learned to read with comic books, and some of my earliest memories are fantastic images from comics, including some of yours, because my brother hit the hippie trail back in the 60s and early 70s and brought some of them back, including Ganesh. And I uh, thought, wow, who's this guy? Uh, <laughs> so these images, they will last a lifetime. And as we see here with pictures from Draupadi and Krishna, um, it really does bring it to life uh, in a very exciting way, especially if not everybody, not every parent is a great storyteller. Um, some either forget the details or they hum and haw and the kids can get a bit, oh, please. But if you're looking at fantastic images of guys with many heads and uh, heads getting cut off and things, it stays with you. And so I've always thought that graphic novels, comic books are a fantastic medium for uh, getting a story across and in a really memorable way. And I had written several books by this stage for Campfire, including one on Gandhi as well. And by this time, I'd been reading the Mahabharata, and, and I was fascinated by it. I, I loved the characters in, in there, the fact that the good guys, to me, didn't seem that good, in fact, and I sympathized with the bad guys. Um, I, I, <laughs> I really did. I loved Duryodhan. I, I, I thought, you know, he's great with Karna. What a great double act. And I didn't blame him for getting a bit cheesed off with these Pandavas. I, I would have felt the same. And I actually think in every family, uh, you know, when you get um, sibling rivalry, it's not that different. Okay, it's on a grander scale, uh, but it's... Yeah, it's not that different. And so here we see Ravan as well brought to life in a way that kids will remember and it will help them remember the story then to pass on to their kids and to their friends. And when it came time for me to actually feel comfortable enough to uh, try and give my version of these stories because... I really wanted to share them with my friends in the West, with my family in the West, so I really wanted to have a go at it. But I thought, 
okay, Campfire's done it great before, you've done it fantastically before, I don't want to do something that's the same, because what's the point? I wanted to try something a little bit different, and so if we could have the uh, sci-fi version, yes. Here we go, so we decided to do our version, the Karov Empire, um, dealing with the Mahabharat, and it was a series, and I thought, these stories, they're timeless. In fact, reading them, a lot of the weapons and the, the things, they seem straight out of science fiction. A long, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It really is. It's so that. And so I thought, rather than having it, uh, let's have it out in an unspecified place in whether it is another galaxy, whether it's our galaxy, whether it's in the far-flung future or the far-flung past. Let's bring it to life and bring these people, these uh, heroes and villains to life uh, for kids um, in a modern 21st century setting. Um, and this happened when we were at one of the Comic Cons and I was speaking with my boss at Campfire and we were noticing a lot of people picking up DC Comics or Marvel Comics and we said, well look, because they're into sci-fi, they're into superheroes and my opinion was, well, you've already got the greatest superheroes ever let's really beef that up into uh, a movie version of it, which is another thing you can do with graphic novels. You, have, you don't have a limit to your budget. You can go over the top with uh, the special effects, with the sets, and that's what we tried to do here with Abimanyu in the first volume of the Core of Empire. Um, and yes, here we have, uh, yes, volume two, where we have Ash, I, I, I stumble over the names, Ashvatama, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we, have, we have it beginning centuries, millennium after the events, he's still alive, um, he's still suffering, he's still seeking atonement, and then we go back to actually try and understand how he did the horrible things that he did. He wasn't born a monster, and in fact he isn't a monster. He made a few bad life choices along the way, and as we all do, um, but most of us don't have to live forever for it. And so really, we try to make our stories as graphic as possible, but getting the story, it's not a cheap way of telling the story, it's a way of making the story ultra memorable, so it'll live on with you. Jason, I, I have one question for you, um, and, and then I'm going to ask you to wrap up because yeah. we want to have time for questions. But um, are there going to be more Core of an Empire from uh, you, or have you decided not to do this anymore? Actually, I, th there are still at least two more that I would love to do. Karna. Well, Karna is, is what I would actually like to do Duryodhan, and... Um, which, of course, the two go hand in hand, uh, really. I would, uh, uh, and I didn't want to do, start with him. I wanted to save him for, for, the, for later because he was my favorite character in there. I wanted to do Duryodhan. I wanted to do Bhishma um, as well. Um, those were the two that I... at least make it a trilogy, I think. We've had three so far. You've had, well, then I'm, I'm not knowing one. We have had three. We've had Abhimanyu, yeah. which was to start with, a good crowd pleaser to start and with. And Ashvatama. Ashvatama. And now the most recent one is Shakuni. Um, oh. I, I have to see this. <laughs> yes, another great okay. character. We have the loaded dice of Shakuni, yes. So. Then make it a, make, you need five. Oh, For the we'll Mahabharata, have, you need five. We'll have at least 20. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Well, um, I'd like to uh, open this up, I think, for, for questions, because I suspect... Pankaj, I'm sorry, yes. Do you, you want to go back and... Were you able to arrange Pankaj's um, cartoon quips so that they don't fast forward? 
<laughs> yeah. I I was of course uh, struck by the you know the the way that the dystopian Mahabharata narrative fits the kind of international graphic novel aesthetic. It does. I, I, well. I think in Europe and the States, I think superheroes have gone very dark. And so, yes, it seemed the perfect way to show those stories. Yeah. Okay, very quickly. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, here I have this one. Okay, thank you once again. Uh, Thank you so much, Jason. That was a, a real eye-opener. This is, this is a total graphic novel event because we've got Star Wars on this side and we've got Yoda on this side. So I think this, is, this makes it complete. Uh, so very quickly with the cartoons, this is the one which went viral. Uh, and uh, very interestingly, a cousin of my wife is in New York and he is working at Apple. And so I sent him this, and I told him this is the one which went viral. So I think he's put it up somewhere in one of those buildings up there. Okay, the next one. We'll quickly go through about six or seven of them. This is again uh, something about technology, all of us know. Uh, if you notice, during our times, birthdays used to be so noisy. But nowadays you have five, six kids, very quiet, all right? If there's wi Wi-Fi, and there'll be people kind of uh, you know, messaging each other across the table. Let's get out of this place. It's like, you know, signal is not good. All right. And why are you talking to that person? Block him, poke him, whatever. Uh, next one. So this is on the birthday. Uh, okay. This is, this is my generation trying to handle the technology. How many times have I told you not to WhatsApp in the toilet, but do you ever listen? You know, this happens and it's still buzzing there inside the, inside the pot over there. You know. That's the best place to kind of really catch up on your social media. And if your social media could see you at that point of the day, <laughs> they wouldn't be socializing with you. Okay, next one. Uh, next one. This is again uh, how I love these. This is, this is supposed to be family time now. Everybody is together, but everybody is so physically together, but so disconnected actually, you know. And if you notice, the mother has the remote for the TV, all right? Nobody's bugging her about changing the channel because no one's bothered really, okay? And so she can watch her kumkum -kum can bhagya as much as she wants, all right, or wherever. This is on technology. Next. Okay, this was the ice bucket challenge, if you remember, all right? You take a bucket of ice water and pour it over yourself. Now, in our region, water is a scarcity. You have to wait in line for hours to get a bucket of water. All right? And so this is what you do. This is also something which is peculiar. Whenever you go out to eat, before you start eating, take a picture so you can put it up on Facebook or WhatsApp, it, all right? And tell people, look at me, I'm, what, I'm eating McDonald's or I'm eating pizzas. All right, come on, okay. This is something all of us know. We used to have so much fun with just a piece of you know, a rag and whatever, but this is like, he's surrounded with gadgets and still the kids are like, I'm bored. This is, wow, isn't that the Great Wall of China? No, Commander, actually that's the great LPG cylinder queue of Sikkim. You have to, and this is from, uh, somebody told me that the Great Wall of China was the only man-made, uh, you know, structure visible from moon. Now you can see the LPG cylinder line from Sikkim. Okay, next one. I don't know, this is, this is again, I think, universal, maid servant blues, washing machine, yes, vacuum cleaner, yes, flat screen TV, yes, puja bonus, yes, okay, let me think about it. And he says, are you hiring this maid or is she hiring you? you know, because we are so, she's the one who controls the house, actually. Next, and uh, yes, dinner's ready. Dinner at six o'clock, are you nuts? Don't upset her, she wants to watch her cereal, that's why dinner's early tonight, let it be. You have to, the whole house works according to keeping her happy, all right? If you notice, he's just got his drink. He's not ready for his dinner yet. Okay, next, maybe a few more. Oh, this is very painful. Remember when we used to also let our hair down like those kids on the dance floor? Yep, only difference is that now it's our hair that's letting us down, you know? So this is for the ex-party animals and uh, the next one, okay, the final one. This is why I just asked Jason to 
come visit us in Sikkim and I asked him, how's your liver? Because of this, only so many flavors and only one liver. You know, because you don't say like, a heart is okay, everything else is okay. Liver is, if it's okay, then you're quite cool. Yeah, so I'd like to stop with that. Thank you. Well, I think we have just about 10 minutes left for questions from the audience. So please, if you would like to ask anybody a question, raise your hand. Nobody. Are there any fans of graphic novels here? Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Our, uh, yeah, go ahead. There's one. Hi, I'm Vrishali, and uh, I have a question to Reena Ji because um, we discussed how the imagery of gods has changed over time what uh, young readers are preferring and what old readers are preferring. Although this is very uh, disconnected from the fact that we are talking about a graphic novel, but uh, mostly when we are talking about, and especially when we are talking about Amar Chitra Katha, it's related to the kids. Aren't we forcing some sort of body imagery at a very basic level where we are giving them an image that this is right or this is not right? For what to expect I, in the I, right kind of a body image? Are you talking of uh, the comics walled right through? Or no, 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 not particular? right through. Like, uh, as we talk that gods now are supposed to have a six pack. <laughs> Why can't they be lean and thin? Why can't they be a normal average body shape? Because this gives a lot of, you know, when you're in teenagers, you really can't deal with that pressure of being the perfect shape. It comes, yes, it, yes. it lingers on for very long in life. Yes, which so. is why I said we try and maintain a balance. So we have had, uh, you know, a very muscular Shiva in one of the comics. We've had a slim Krishna in another. Uh, it's, uh, see, it's the artist's point of view. We work with so many artists over 50 years. We've had, you know, numerous artists and they all have their own vision of what a Krishna should be or what Ram should be like. So they bring with them that imagination, you know, and their art. So, and today with the kind of, um, you know, computer uh, software that they are using and the kind of comics that are available all over the world. See, the difference between this mythology and a mythology from the West or from Egypt is that ours is a living mythology. So we identify with the gods. They are there in our puja room, they are there in our lives, which is why you feel strongly about it, you know. Uh, uh, but if you see it just as mythology and just as storytelling, it is, uh, you know, it's an artist-inspired piece of work. So the earlier artists had uh, a different concept. They had the Ardhanarishwar concept of Shiva. Today's artists, the younger people, seem to have a different view of Shiva. So we're just giving them that space to experiment. So we get both, both types. So we're not forcing anything on children. It's, uh, it's, it's a view, it's something that the artists put forward and uh, that's what we're giving to the kids. But, okay. but I would suggest that there is pressure that comes from the broader visual agenda of popular culture, right? I mean, movie stars also used to be soft and rounded, male movie stars. But these and, things and female. But they feed into each other, right? I mean, mm. I don't think they one feed into be each other. As an example. Of yeah. And, and, you know, Salman Khan took off his shirt in uh, Mane Pyarkia and it changed the way actors looked. And that sort of body image, which is now very pervasive in advertising and in media, I think it probably affects the way the, 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 the illustrators... The illustrators yeah. think and uh, draw, yes, they do. Yeah. I think it's a whole process, as she said, it depends on the illustrator's point of view also. Imagine now, I was just thinking while she was talking, Imagine Gandhi having a six-pack. I mean, it's bizarre, no? I mean, I would never sort of experiment that because people have lived and seen him in a certain way. Gods and goddesses, God knows who's seen them. You know, so you can still experiment with them and keep them in that surreal world. Yeah, but I do feel that there is the market that one is trying to please. I mean, let's not yeah. deride that or underplay that. I think the body image question is a brilliant question, frankly. And this is all part of our popular culture, and this is the kind of image that we think will sell the fastest, and that is why 
uh, how is it then that every illustrator has the same body image in mind for the same God? How is it nobody thinks of a corpulent Shiva, you know? Well, so I would, I would say in defense of Campfire that some of the art is, it, is done with a quite different aesthetic. Some, some of the mythological ones, Jason, you want to mention that? Yeah. Uh, some of them look sort of like Mithila painting. They, they've borrowed from a lot of sources, not just from this kind of international six-pack uh, abs, you know, uh, macho kind of graphic novel, which uh, admittedly the Korva Empire does have. Yeah. Yes, it, <laughs> it, it does. The Korva Empire does have a lot of the traditional... Uh, when we look at doing a book, we're looking at it as we would a movie. And... Okay, some of the characters may not be the body beautiful. Shakuni, for example, is not fantastic to look at him. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, we, we, Duryodhana, he's got a pretty good six pack. Uh, he's a little bit podgy, I suppose, if I can say that. But, uh, but yeah, maybe he's seen better days. And you know, yes, some of the uh, characters, but you've got to remember as well, we're talking about young warriors. You're, you're talking about, they are going to be muscular. They are going to be, they're not going to be out of shape. They're going, or, you know, they would be strong and fit because they've spent years training and, and it's like athletes, uh, which basically they are. So. I think it would look stranger, while I do see the point of catering for body image, I think if you're doing a book about warriors, and let's face it, Shiva is a warrior in many ways. 300 for example. Yeah, okay, yes. It, 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 all of these people. Everybody was. Yeah, these people, they, they are warriors, so, and they're ascetic as well with it. They're not... Um, Overindulging, they're not. They, they are in tip-top condition. So it would be stranger. It would be more odd if they didn't look the ideal of wow. Whether <laughs> what's interesting is that you take gods as sci-fi and then you worry about the real aesthetic. I mean, isn't that a contradiction in terms? Really, no. Um, as well, if you're a god and you're, yeah, okay. Uh, we, we, you, I know. We, yeah, they're not. They, they aren't. They, they, they would be in the best of condition. They would be. Let me ask Arpita in, yeah. in the Yoda books, so you're trying to resist this kind well, of. Well, our genre stylistic. is very different. So, yeah. because we are making non fiction comics, right? right. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I do think that this is a very fair criticism of popular culture visual imagery period and it has to be discussed over and over again Absolutely. because one on the one hand you're talking about the young people consuming your uh, product and then you talk in terms of how it's teaching them something and then the visual imagery remains static in terms of fitness and the body looking in a particular a particular way uh, as you know, another consumer, it cannot get more authentic than this because this is a consumer and a reader sitting here who pointed it out. So I think the market to not mention the market would be doing your own job disservice. Yeah, but I also think it depends on the story on in which form of that particular god you're talking about. If you're talking of Shiva and Sati, I would still have a slim Shiva. If you're talking of Rudra, I would have him muscular. You know, same, same with Rama. When he's pulling the Dhanush, he would be a slimmer Rama. When he comes and faces Ravan, he would be a stronger Ram. So also the gods, after all, they're gods. <coughs> they can change, you know. During, in the story itself, they change their uh, body, they change their character. And as Arpita says the market is an important part of all this and we do cater to what children want today or young people want today and uh, we have to balance the two. On this, uh, if I may uh, talk about the market thing, I think we have also changed in terms of what we like and uh, considering Rina and me and Philip, Jason, we come from a different uh, comics generation. Uh, even our comics, for example, even the visions of Campfire and the old uh, Amar Chitra Katha, we were just talking about it. Amar Chitra Katha during our time was much brighter and, you know, red, you know, all the primary colors. Now you find it much more darker. 
And if you talk about the superheroes, even the superheroes from our times have changed. The same superheroes, look at Superman. And between Batman and Superman, Batman suddenly became more popular. For some reason, we prefer the darker side. Look at Star Wars, come over to the dark side, you know. I think even Yoda started thinking about that at some point. And then we have uh, Superman also, the latest Superman is, a, if you look at his first uniform, costume, red and that very aquamarine blue. Now it's like more darker. In fact, Spider-Man and Superman have almost similar costumes. In fact, Spider-Man also is, now we have a darker Spider-Man. Superman has, uh, in fact, uh, the red briefs have disappeared. I don't know where they disappeared, but and now he doesn't have them. Phantom, can you imagine somebody in purple, uh, you know, bodysuit with, many of the kids are not going to understand this, but he actually used to ride around the forest with a, a, you know, black and white striped briefs. But I think that's also the... Uh, so that changes. Sorry, is that a we question? Have, we, we did have another question, yeah. Uh, hello, yeah. I'm a director with Campfire Graphic Novels, and I just had one question. Um, graphic novels has truly been a medium for storytelling. And uh, what does the panel think about graphic novels entering into the education segment? Uh, do you think it, it has a kind of uh, uh, the appeal over there to kind of educate the, the children or young adults to think differently, to impact them, uh, or for social causes? I just want to understand if graphic novels and comic books have a kind of a future in teaching in classrooms and can we impact our students, can we actually take up different topics? Uh, it's not about just storytelling. Can we take up different topics to kind of teach, uh, uh, you know, educate children through comics and, and uh, graphic novels? Okay. Uh, uh, can, would graphic novels be, can they be implemented in teaching? Uh, I think uh, many of the colleges, uh, at least uh, I know for a fact, Sikkim University where I teach, uh, we have a paper on graphic novels and uh, graphic novels not so much and you know most of the time we think graphic novels, comic books, funnies and all that, you know, super. But we have graphic novels, for example, uh, Barefoot Gen by Keiji Nakazawa, that's on the Holocaust in uh, Japan. And that's a very powerful uh, novel about uh, nuclear weapons. We have that in the syllabus. Now, teaching the kids, you know, through graphic novels, the impact is much more, I've found. And then uh, uh, I found that now this, uh, like we were just talking, kids re react more to visuals rather than the written word. And so now a good balance of visuals with the written word would be the best way of teaching them. And then when we show them, say, things like, for example, the sleepwalking scene in Macbeth, when they see her with the actual, reading it, talking about it, Shakespearean language, it just kind of goes over their head. But when they see an actual image of this lady walking through the passage with that candle or whatever and all that, but that image stays, you know. So I, I use that, I, I use Macbeth, and I didn't know, even uh, there's a graphic novel uh, uh, representation of uh, T.S. Eliot's uh, Proof Rock. Mm -hmm. They actually have that, and that makes teaching so much more easier. You know, and the kids, and kids, I feel retain it much more. Janvi? So. Uh, I was just saying, um, because apart from this book, I've done a lot of campaigns on Gandhi, and they're all very multimedia uh, interactive campaigns. So what we did in that, we designed a couple of games uh, in the form of quizzes and animated games uh, in which kids were sort of exposed to it and they had to make choices. So it was an environment related game uh, that went off very well. Quizzes about Gandhi's life, the important aspects of his life where he talks about eating healthy, you know, uh, uh, importance of sport in one's life and um, other aspects and other values that he stood for. So these various mediums of media and technology that we use are some are tools which children just want to sort of, and youngsters want to sort of latch on to. And you'll be surprised that how, what ideas they come out with. Because I've compiled a book in which we ask them to make um, artwork on uh, a theme called Gandhi and sport. And it was their ideas, what, how they depicted it on paper in their artwork. It was just out of the world. You'll have to see it to really experience it. 
so if you feed them the right thing, the, they have it in them to, you know, to sort of uh, connect with it. I have a small question. A uh, question to ACK and Janavi both. Uh, you know, most of the comic world or the graphic novel world in the rest of the uh, uh, world are all done in a single language. So we in India are the only country that think in multi-language. Now, uh, when an idea, the storyboard starts, do you normally work in your local language or in English, thus to ACK, because it's a, it's a fine balance that you have to create between the languages. Okay, yeah. in Amar Chitrakata, we do work in English to start with, that's because the team is from all over the country. You know, we're not really from any particular part of the country, so uh, it's, a, it's a big team of writers and you know, the research people, and we primarily work in English. And then uh, we translate into the other languages that we uh, are, you know, going to publish the comics in. Having said that, suppose now, right now we are doing the Ramayana, we are doing all the Khans in great detail. And the writer will take the Ramayana, the original uh, from the Sanskrit, uh, read the translation and then take it from there and make the script. So we do use the local language, the text in the local language to read it originally to get the flavor of the story and then we do it in English, uh, after which it is translated into the various languages that we do. Thank you. And Janavi, uh, your topic is Gandhi. Uh, now the masses in India are Hindi speaking. So why is it that you opted for English and not Hindi? in a mass Hindi-speaking country to talk about Gandhi? Well, my Hindi is good, yes, but my English is better, so I was much more comfortable in sort of expressing whatever that I had to in the book. Uh, but I will be, of course, working closely with people for Gujarati, Hindi. Gujarati, it has to be there in Gujarati. Um, Hindi, of course, as you said, the whole of India uh, speaks the language, so it is very important, uh, more than English. Sorry? Not the whole of India, but… Quite a bit, quite a bit. Yes. And um, ideally, this book, I would like to sort of get it translated in all the constitutional languages, considering it's on Gandhi, and I want it to reach in every school library at the end of the day. So, yes, language is important, but yes, I've written it in whichever language I was comfortable with. It happens to be English. So, so to the panel, there's a very fine line between where comic ends and where graphic novel starts. What, how do you differentiate? Where do you draw the line? Um, well, it's, it falls in the same genre of comic, a graphic novel. The only thing is, I think, it's a much more se serious sort of piece of uh, visuals and text which comes together. Uh, it's more in-depth, uh, uh, it's more well-studied, it's more well-researched. Not to say that comics, as in comical things, are not researched. They also have a serious message to them. Um, but I think it's, it's more intense. I think... Um when we think graphic novels, of course, we immediately start thinking Mouse and uh, Joe Sacco and uh, Marjan Satrapi. And I think there is, of course, as Janvi says, you know, you, you, you are sort of um, expressing yourself in a way that can appeal to both or to all kinds of age groups. Um, I represent the nonfiction end of it, where we are using the comic medium to tell stories that are real stories from different parts of the country. So I think it's just, you know, the, 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 the distinction really is in how a medium is being used to do different things. And I think we're really growing in that space because people are doing very interesting stuff um, in, in using the medium for different uh, sort of ends. And now, for instance, my friend Sarnath Banerjee, if I ask him this question, comic and graphic novel, he says, oh, shut up, I've had enough of this, you know, I don't even want to get into this. But that's Sarnath Banerjee, I mean, let, let, let. But I, I think typically, when I think of a graphic novel, I think of it as having a lot more text. 
it's a lot more read to read. Not, maybe not necessarily, but isn't that usually the case? No? no? Okay. Really? The, the graphic novels where we travel which are very which little. As a matter of fact, one of the graphic novels. That shows novel, how much I know. One of the graphic novel, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, mutations or experimentations has been with do away with the speech bubble and let the reader uh, interpret entirely based on the visual. Yeah, I think the great thing about graphic novels or comics, and I, I don't mind which you call it, um, really is anything's possible. So you could have a graphic novel with no words whatsoever, and it could still work. But yes, generally, I would imagine really with graphic novels, yes, it's a complete story, generally longer than your 22-page comic book. Um, not necessarily more serious, because I think comics can be serious. It, it all depends on the subject matter. Even a funny comic, or you can have a funny graphic novel. They're not trash anymore. That's the thing. I think, to begin with, I think people, a lot of people use the term graphic novel to give it a serious uh, air and to make people outside of the industry or unfamiliar with it or the teachers that used to complain about them reading comics have to take them seriously. But I think these days, they are a serious, uh, they're a serious or at least a valuable um, reading instrument for getting people to read and enjoy reading. I still love comics. Well, I think yeah. that's a good note to close on and we're out of time. So thank you all and thank you panelists. <laughs>